Hey guys, welcome back to Living La Vie. <laughs> hey Heartbeats, welcome to my channel. I'd like to take this opportunity to encourage you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. So my first episode, I shouted out my mom and my dad because I love them so much. They are the reasons why I'm even in this world, right? It's super cool because I got some feedback from my dad and he said, you know, um, definitely if you're going to start vlogging, you want to tap into your music, you know, people that want to know about you, they want to know about your music. That's what today's episode is going to be about. It's going to be about the music. All right, so we're just going to jump right into it. Let's go. What year did I get into the music industry? So 2014 was when I got into the music industry. I have recorded music before. I recorded songs. I've been on features since, woo, since I was like 19 years old. You know, I started out with SoundCloud and then built my way up to getting it on all digital music streaming platforms. My latest release is Love Sick. Love Sick is a heartbreak record and it's um, I'm really excited about it because it's the first time I poured my pain into my music. I really did go through that experience and uh, that was all my feelings and my emotions in a song. It was something like, why am I feeling it? I thought I was healing. You were in a thought and now all of a sudden I'm back in my feelings. Why can't I let you go? You are not the one. When I did that, I was like, oh, this is nice. I need to write this down. I gotta like get, get a pen or write it down on my iPad on voice notes or whatever. Well, I know a lot of people were living in a hookup culture and I felt like, you know, well, let me talk about how I was heartbroken off of a situationship. My emotions were just, they were deep. He was who he was to me and I'm grateful for everything. I mean, I'm grateful for my experience with him because of that lovesick was born. Supernova and lovesick, by the way. I feel like you just have to be grateful for everything that you experience in life, whether it's positive or negative, because every negative situation has a positive in it. You just have to find the positive and hold on to that. What is my biggest record? My biggest record is body positivity. Let's get it. Body positivity for me, for you. Body positivity is, oh, where do I begin with body pause? First of all, body positivity for me was just a nice upbeat record that will have you feeling yourself, will make you feel good about yourself. It's a feel good record, but it also has a very positive message. It was initially supposed to be catered to the plus size community, but it technically caters to everyone. It caters to adults, to children, to uh, plus size, to, to thin people, you know, all ages, all races, all ethnicities, like just everyone. Anybody can listen to Body Paws. I'm not cursing on Body Paws. So that's a plus. It's already radio ready. Body positivity organically grew on TikTok. Right now, we, I just made 17,000. So I'm super excited about it. 17,000 people on TikTok are currently using my sound, Body Positivity. I wrote Body Positivity in 2019. I released it during the pandemic in 2020. I know the Don't Rush Challenge was really, really big. And um, the first video for Body Positivity was actually a Don't Rush Challenge that I did with my girls. I might just show you guys some of it. Body, body positivity for me, for you. So let nobody, let nobody come for you. So let nobody, let nobody come for you. Body positivity for me, for you. Body positivity for me, for you. So let nobody, let nobody come for you. So let nobody, let nobody come for you. Strolling down the street, got my head held high. I can feel him stepping as I walk. 
walk on by okay. They looking and they laughing but I can't see why All I see is beauty looking from these eyes You either clapping or you booing Either way I keep it moving Steal one delicious, gotta keep them boys drooling I was bang song, gotta keep these rolls intact Some rather see a jiggle as a matter of fact it's really cool because instead of Don't Rush or another song, I, I I was like, you know what? I had the girls send me their video clips and I went ahead and edited the video. I said, guys, um, what song should I use? And I put, I made a poll and um, I think I included Aphrodite in my poll. I think I might have included Ladies Night. I had a couple of songs, but Body Positivity hadn't been released. No one's heard it yet. So when I saw that a lot of people were voting for like for me to use one of my songs, I said, you know what? I'm going to use Body Positivity. I think it goes perfectly. And I ended up using Body Pos. Everyone fell in love with it. It started growing on TikTok, I would say around the summer of 2020. And my little cousin, Jasmine, she came up to me and said, hey, do you know how many people are using your song on TikTok? I said, no, what are you talking about? And she was like, yeah, look. And she showed me and I said, oh, wow. It was only 81 people at the time. And I remember just looking through the videos and crying, like I, tears just started falling down my face. I couldn't believe it. I was in complete disbelief. Like these were happy tears by the way, guys. But I was just like emotional because I couldn't believe that my song was actually trending. Like my, People were singing the lyrics. People were creating dances to it. People were rapping to it. They were modeling to it. I, and still to this day, like it blows my mind how the song is just organically growing. I shot the video for Body Positivity in September of 2020. It was so much fun. And if you look at the video, you wouldn't believe how many things went wrong leading up to the shooting of the video. I'm not gonna get into that now. That's like a whole other topic, a whole other day. Because of body positivity, I have been flown out to Florida. I have been flown out to Vegas. I have been flown out to Chicago. And it's, it's amazing, all in 2021. In 2021 alone, I flew out six times. I haven't flown this year yet, but we're gonna change that. We're going to make it happen. I got to fly before this year ends, okay? Let's manifest it. Let's manifest it. I'm going to fly somewhere before this year ends. Body Positivity has been played in Egypt, in clubs in Egypt. It's been played in London. It's been played in Canada. It's all over the world. And it doesn't matter how many songs I put out, what I put out, how new or old the song is. I'm always going to promote Body Positivity because the message is great. And the song is just rocking. Mine, it's my baby. It's it's my biggest song, it's my biggest record. And I'm super proud of it. Super proud of myself and super proud that that song is doing what it's intended to do. When did I realize that music was my passion? Um, in high school, I was in between two worlds. Illustration art and music art. I knew that I belonged on stage when I performed at the March concert in Fashion Industries High School. And I made sure I did that, I think two years in a row, I did the March concert and it was so much fun. I loved it. I loved the energy that I received from the audience when I was on stage and I, I, and I just fell in love with that feeling. And to this day, to this very day, I love performing. Any opportunity I get to perform, I'm on it. Yes, where? Where is the performance? When? <laughs> what time? Like. Yes, sign me up. I'm with it all the way. I absolutely love performing. Every time I perform, I get a lot of love. A lot of people will tell me, you know, your energy, oh my God, and you didn't run out of breath. And I'm like, yes, I did. I definitely ran out of breath. I just didn't, didn't make it obvious. But I definitely ran out of breath. <laughs> They're like, well, you make it look good, girl, because I didn't run out of breath. I'm like, man, listen, if you only knew, um, I make it look pretty, but... It's, listen, I just love it. I love performing. I love, you know, filling out the crowd and engaging with the crowd, um, exchanging that energy with the crowd. The goddess of love and beauty to refer to me as Venus. And you're gonna need a lot more to fall for me than just Venus. Cause I'm that rider like I just sleeping in the dark. Try 
It's just so much. I, it's so much fun. I freaking love it. Just talking about it lights me up. Do you see that? Do you guys see that? You got y'all. Y'all gotta see these little light beams around me. Y'all gotta see it because there's just no way. Any R and B's? Absolutely. My very first R and B was Supernova. 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 Supernova is the prelude to Lovesick. I was super inspired by Janae Eiko and Ari Lennox. I was listening to them a lot during that time. And I felt like, you know, I need to get back into my singing. I need to really exercise my vocals and um, try to do this R&B, try to write an R&B record and see how it comes out. And I'm so proud of myself because it actually came out really good. But I can't take full credit for it. I got to give some credit to my boo, to KV on. Okay, I will never he is the best engineer in New York City when it comes to mixing R&B vocalists, okay? Let's not forget that he is an artist himself, okay? He is an amazing vocalist, and he actually vocal coaches me when I'm in the booth. Do this, you should do that. Let's try this, let's try that. And I always listen to him because he's very, very wise when it comes to you know, harmonizing and just the vocals in general. He's just so amazing at everything he does. He's a perfectionist and rightfully so because everything he does in my eyes is perfect. And I am not saying this just to, you know, to gas him up. He knows I love him to pieces. He knows this. I'm always shouting him out every chance I get because he's just the best. He's just the fucking best. He knows what he's doing. If I'm gonna put my money somewhere, I need to know that they know what they're doing and they also know my voice and how to work with my voice and how to mix my vocals and how to make me sound amazing. Normally, I only go to other studios when um, I'm featured on a track and whoever I'm featured on the track with, they have their home studio. I just go to wherever they go. But other than that, I'm going to Kavion. And everybody knows I love Kavion. The next video I will be shooting is Supernova. Supernova is the prelude to Lovesick, so I definitely want to shoot Supernova before shooting Lovesick. You guys will get a video for both of them, don't worry. Get my shit together, okay? All my ducks in a row, once I do that, the video shooting will begin. Spanish records, yes, I have a Spanish record. I have a couple of um, freestyles where I'll kind of like dibble and dabble and I'll do the Spanglish thing. All in all, my first fully Spanish record is a Dembo record and it's called Gordita. And for those of you who don't know, Gordita means chubby in Spanish. So All right. We're gonna put Ita behind the Gorda, making it Gordita, means you're chubby. Yeah, that was a really fun record to record. I love it. Since taking the leap, how do you eat? I will say that I have planned for some time to develop several streams of income for myself. And again, let me pat myself on the back. That's my side, wait, there goes my back, okay. <laughs> um, I read somewhere that every woman should have seven streams of income. So I managed to have seven streams of income, but I'm not doing it the right way. I'm gonna tell you why. Because these streams of income are all side hustles, 
I have to make at least one of these a main hustle. Once I make one of them a main hustle, I can then dive deeper and create several main hustles. And then I'll be a millionaire. If you want to get into what are my incomes, I get paid through uh, merch. I get paid music streams. I have an OnlyFans. A gig that I do for my cousin. I had um, a gig that I did uh, selling phones and tablets to those who receive um, benefits from the government. So if you have Medicaid or, or food stamps and you qualify to get a free phone, I'd be the one to sign you up. And then we have tablets for 20 bucks. Um, I don't do that anymore. I did it for about three weeks, but I'm not doing it anymore. It was just uh, some miscommunication as far as the um, amount of time that I had to dedicate to that. So it, it's no hard feelings. It is what it is. It just wasn't meant to be. I help anyone that has a small business. I can create flyers. I do album covers. Uh, I do promo videos. I edit pictures. So I also can create EPKs. So anyone who doesn't know what an EPK is, the electronic press kit. Sometimes you'll hear people just call it press kit. Um, but it's very important. It's actually like having a resume when you go looking for a job. When you're an artist and you want people to discover your talent, you want to have an electronic press kit because it's very important that people have something to look at. You know, they want to see what, where you've been when it comes to media, what you've done, what you're capable of, who you've collaborated with, what write-ups you have, like anything that you could think of that has to do with your artistry and your music, if you have merchandise, all of that, you include it in your EPK. You can hit me up on Instagram. I always respond to my Instagram DMs. Do I have any collaborations? Ah, are you kidding? Yes, I have many collaborations with a lot of great artists. I have a few collaborations coming out this year. I have one that I just released. Me and Bigger just released a collabo. It's called Like You. Like you, nobody. Do it like you, mama. Who do it like you? It is streaming on all platforms right now. Check it out. I have a lot of collaborations that are going to be in the works. Um, I do have a collab with Primo Stacks. I have a collab with Moni Allure. And those should be coming out sometime this year. I have a collaboration in the works with Kenny Boy. That should definitely be coming out this year as well. And I have a lot of other uh, collabs that I am supposed to be working on soon. I do have a collaboration coming up with Jamie Lopez. I have a collaboration coming up with JTLR. We're going to make it happen. We're going to do the damn thing. Okay, Piriana. It's been so much fun getting into this music thing with y'all. If y'all have any questions, please feel free. Drop them in the comments and I will be sure to answer it in my next video. Let's do these affirmations. I make $1,000 every single day. Yes, I do. I make $1,000 every day. I am resilient. I am strong. I am gorgeous, darling. Gorgeous. Do you see this face? I am healthy. I am amazing. I am powerful. Today's shout out goes to none other than the beautiful Chanel Diane Dolan. Yes, AKA Nelly Shaz, all right? She has so many titles. She is the creator and host of Going Up From Here podcast. She wears so many titles and roles and wears them well. She's a mom. She's a daughter, girlfriend, friend, like you name it. She's just amazing all around. And she has proven to be not only one of my bestest friends and biggest supporters, she's definitely a heartbeat. And she's, uh, I'm like at a loss for words when it comes to describing this woman because she's just a phenomenal woman, like Maya Angelou said. That's one of my favorite poems, by the way. Um, Chanel Diane embodies what it is to be a phenomenal human being. Screw a phenomenal woman. She's a phenomenal human being, period. And I'm so grateful that she was brought to me and God had connected the dots and, and brought us two together because ugh, I don't know where I would be 
without a Chanel, Diane. I think everyone needs a Chanel in their life. Absolutely. Chanel has sponsored my first batch of merch. Chanel has definitely gone to see me perform. She came, she flew with me to Vegas. Me and her went to Vegas. We did our first time in Vegas together. We both got sponsored by the Wolfpack Entertainment. So shout out to Reggie, BJ Delight, Theo, Stu. Shout out to you guys. We had such a great time in Vegas and I would definitely do it all over again. But Chanel is one person you wanna have in your corner. I'm talking about, I don't gotta toot my own horn because she toots it for me. And it's just amazing to have someone that loves me, represents me, and freaking believes in me as much as I believe in myself. I get emotional because sometimes I feel like, do I even deserve a Chanel in my life? Sometimes you ask God why he brings certain people in your life. And you wonder if you're even deserving of that, that beautiful friendship and that beautiful light. But I know I'm also a beautiful person inside and out and I definitely deserve a Chanel because I am that too. I have so much that I'm going through and um, like, like I said, you guys are gonna see the pretty and the ugly. So sometimes you guys will see me get in my feels and in my emotions and my bag and I'll probably cry, shed a few tears here and there, but some of them will be happy tears and some of them will definitely not be. And that's just the reality of this life. This is the life that I chose, the life of an artist. And I chose to take the leap and I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna prove to all of you guys that it can be done. You just have to keep going through all... <laughs> You're gonna walk through the fire, but God is gonna be with you every step of the way when you walk through that fire. And I just wanna say to you, Chanel, baby girl, I thank you, I love you, I appreciate you. If if I didn't have you, I don't know how far I would get in this, in this industry, in this music world, because it's definitely not easy. But she's always there to remind me that I got it and that I must keep going and that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a star, that I'm already a star. Shout out, to, shout out to my manager, Zaza. Zaza tells me all the time. He tells me all the time. You are a star. You're already on top. We just need the world to see it. And Chanel is like the female version of him because she tells me that too. Um, shout out to Mac Johnson as well. Mac Johnson, he's an amazing artist. It's, I'm so honored to be a co-artist with him because he's just amazing. Be on the next flight and I'll be gone by the night. I'll be gone by the night. You guys got to check him out. His music is streaming on all platforms. He's been in the game probably longer, if not as long as I have been in the game. And he's doing it. It's no days off. No days off for him. That's his brand. And, um, you know, he's doing big things. So definitely shout out to you guys. Um, I love you. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to my second episode of Living La Vie. What it do, Heartbeats? It's your girl, Barbie La Vie. Thank you so much for watching my journey. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Love you.